Hello learners, welcome to the today's chemistry lesson will be taken through by teacher Martin Nguswa. And in our lesson today, we are going to continue learning about industrial chemistry. Remember we said earlier that there are eight industrial processes, each one of them has some smaller details. And that's why we need to continue and see um, what else is needed out of us. We had discussed about the fundamental processes involved in the extraction of metals. And we said that those metals that are highly reactive, like sodium and aluminium, can only be extracted by electrolysis because of their positions in the electrochemical series. We had looked at sodium. We looked at aluminium. One thing I want you to note from the what we discussed is that aluminium is extracted in a cell which is called the Hulse cell, and sodium is extracted in a cell which is called the Down cell. In both extraction of aluminium and sodium, you observed that there is something that is normally added to lower their melting point. In the extraction of aluminium, we add something called molten cryolite. The role of the cryolite is to lower the melting point of the chief ore from 2015 to around um, uh, 2008, around eight or so. Then in the extraction of sodium, we add calcium chloride to lower the melting point of the ore from 800 to 600. Then you also observe something that these two ores for aluminium and sodium are binary salts, which only can form two products, a metal and a gas. To prevent sodium and chlorine from recombining, we use the seal diaphragm. Then we say that the oxygen produced in the extraction of aluminium reacts with the anode to produce CO2, and that calls for constant replacement of the anode. You also noted that sodium is tapped at the top because it is less denser than the electrolyte. And potassium, uh, aluminium is trapped at the bottom because it is much denser than the electrolyte. So it's important to bring out the similarities between the two. Now we move on today and discuss those other methods that are extracted through different methods other than electrolysis. And this method is called reduction. Reduction is used in the extraction of iron, zinc, and lead. Now the process involved in the extraction of iron and that of lead and that one of zinc is almost the same. So I'm going to discuss the extraction of iron. We start by looking at the ores from which iron is extracted. One of the chief ores is called hematite. Hematite is Fe2O3. You can see the formulas on the screen. The other ore is magnetite, which is Fe3 or 4. And then there's the pyrite, which is iron sulfide. But the chief ore that we're going to use in our discussion today is the hematite. It's called the chief ore, Fe2 or 3. How does it go? The, the, the extraction of iron is carried out in what we call a blast furnace. Remember, blast is because of the hot air that gets through small holes at the bottom, which are called the uh, twires. Then it's called the furnace. A furnace is something that can withstand very, very, very high temperatures. And it is simply a fire clay bricks. Uh, it is um, something that is lined with the, with the clay bricks. Then at the top, if you look at the diagram on your screen, the, it looks like a hood. So that at the top, we, 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 do, we do what you call charging. We charge the furnace by introducing the ore, limestone, and cork from the top. Now what happens when the three get in? Remember there is a controlled way in which they get into the funnel. The first one to get in is carbon or a cork. 
when it reaches the bottom of the furnace, it meets very hot air, blasts. Blast means they come at, in bits. And the cork is meant to combine with oxygen to form carbon for oxide, CO2. The reaction in which CO2 is produced is highly exothermic. And that explains why the temperatures at the furnace at the bottom is usually the highest. is because the reaction is exothermic. The carbon-4 oxide starts to move up. As it gets to the middle, it meets more incoming coke. And remember coke, when it's heated, it acts as a reducing agent. Therefore, the coke reduces the CO2 to produce CO. Remember when you are discussing about preparation of gases, we had mentioned something about reduction of charcoal, reduction of CO2 using charcoal to, as a source of CO. Then the CO form, now the, the, the reaction in which CO is formed is endothermic. That explains why there is a slight reduction in the temperature to 1000. Then the CO moves up slightly where it meets the hematite. At that point, CO, CO reduces the ion O to produce iron and CO2. Remember again that since carbon is also a reducing agent, they assist each other. Some of the iron ore is reduced using CO, some of the iron ore is reduced using coke, and iron and CO2 are produced. The CO2 it comprises what you call the waste gases. Then the iron, being molten at that temperature, falls to the bottom of the cell where it can be tapped out as molten.